Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Ladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Elegan from uh, BB Tangle Dream. And I believe, and I hope I have this right, because um, I had to do a little, um, well, not some digging. I had to uh, find their blog. Um, but I believe the CZT is CZT Kugshim Young. And I hope that's correct. Because it's a lovely tangle, and I want to make sure that uh, we give credit where credit is due. But um, I will put links in the description section uh, for um, uh, actually it's just a video. That's all that that's where we had found it. Uh, it was just a video, and uh, I'll put a link to that on there, and then you can explore some more. Um, I'll also have um, step outs on there for you, um, and. And yeah, and that'd be great. So this is fun. Today is Thursday, the time of this recording, and uh, which that means it's Tangle Time Day. And so we had uh, an amazing two sessions <laughs> having fun exploring this tangle. All right. So this one um, is very similar to Mooka, and actually more of Rick's version of Mooka, if you've done that one at all. Um, I'm trying to think if there was something else, but yeah, it's kind of, I was, I was almost calling it a half mooka because we're just doing one side, not, uh, you know, flipping back and forth like we do in that. So check out mooka if you haven't, I know I have a video on that, um, just so that way you can explore that as well. And I think for this one, I think I will go, I'm going to go diagonal and What's neat about this is we found you can use it as a both a filler and a border, and it, it is just amazing. All right, so I'm going to do my best to do this justice right here. Okay, and this one I found I am having to do a lot of air drawing beforehand. So as you see, it's like, okay, I'm going to do it to here. I'm going to try to do, we're going to just try to do two, and oh, well, you know what? We're just going to take a deep breath and go. All right, so this is a curved line, and I'm going to do the one, and I'll stop periodically just to show. And, okay, so this one, doing a curved line, and then coming down and around into the bulbous part, if you will, like so. And then this is where you can stop where kind of wherever you want, however thin of a stem you want to have coming back. So I'm going to stop about there, just shy of, you know, colliding with that original string. And then we just come back, and then we'll take it a taper in like that, okay? Then, and this, you can all do this in one stroke when you get used to it. And if you, when you watch the video, that's what they do. And, um, you know, and, and that's where it's kind of like Mooka in, in that it's really, you don't even have to pick up your pen. And I'm picking up my pen so that way I can show, you know, here's, here's, you know, places where you can stop. It makes it a little easier to see. All right, then back from the same point, and we're going to pull away a little bit and butt this curve against that. I'm trying to keep them uh, at, you know, the same distance here. And then same thing, I'm stopping there and then coming back in. We're going to do it a third time. Like so. Then, <laughs> ah, here's, so I, I, I was doing this for a while, doing it this way. Do, gonna, we're going to flip and do it backwards, but in true Zentangle fashion, flip your, your page if you can. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing, but this way I can, I can, well, I can do a similar stroke, we should say. Where I'm, and I'm redrawing this just so I'm making sense. No, oh, I don't know. It's sort of similar. Yeah, because I'm, yeah, because see here, I'm going, that's clockwise. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> going counterclockwise. Okay, it just feels better doing it this way, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, the one thing nice about Zentangle is, is thinking about these things and just making sure that you feel comfortable um, doing your tile. So we're going to do this kind of opposite, and I'm coming off of, this, you know, that, that first one that I did, that's really funny. All right. And 
Okay, back to a point. This one is a little bit uh, more interesting there, but it's okay. Like so. I mean, it, it, and that's why it's nice to find the, a place that's comfortable so that way... Um, then the strokes are a little bit more consistent. So that's that's a, a bonus for doing that that way. Either way, I'm, yeah, I'm, I would be doing it opposite. I do think it feels better this way. And next I'm gonna blend this in a little bit here. All right, so once you have, you know, however long your, your, um, uh, your thing is gonna be, then <clears throat> we're gonna add, I don't know that this, um, has a name. I, I've seen it used in henna drum, uh, some other things. But it's it's essentially. Um, which way do I want to come this? How about? Let's see. I'm just thinking here out loud. All right. So we're gonna just do three quick little, little curve lines, like that. And then. Just adding some, lines coming straight up there. I want to do these. I'm at least going to do this in these two. Yeah. This one, I think I'm going to leave that for now. We'll do that over here. Well, let's make that one like that. And actually, it is kind of like the henna drum because we would... Um, that's what those petals look like. I'm feeling like I don't have the right angle on that one, that first one, but it's okay. Like so. And then, let's see. We can, um, there's a number of things that we can do. Let me just keep doing, oh, there we go. Um, yeah, up in here, we can do that same thing. And you know what? And it can be more than three, but it's just like a series of um, curved lines like that. And well, why not? Since I put one on this side, let's put one on this side. Although that doesn't come quite to a point. I don't know if I like that. Oh, let's let's do this. There we go. Now I like it. You can also add, um, you know, because like some of these, there, there's not necessarily the room. So you could always, you know, do a little kind of a flux shape if you wanted to and put a little line in there. Um, I should have probably done that there too, but that's okay. Then what we want to do is fill in behind. And I just, oh, I, what did I grab here? An 05. And this is a combo 05 just because it happened to be handy although I'm gonna think I'm probably gonna need the graphic just because it does come to a little bit of more of a point there we go and sometimes when it's uh, in these little tight spaces I will just leave it empty so that way we can I'll come back with the graphic Now, this, of course, is um, a place where you could course correct if need be. I know I was doing one, and I'll show you the samples from today's classes, where um, I had a, it, it was not a, a round shape at all, but because with the course correction, it's like, oh, I could just make it that way. It actually, this was, it, it kind of, I, I don't know what I did, but it, it came down almost to a point. It's like, oh, well, let's just make that round and <laughs> fill it in. Worked out just fine. No, I, I, I don't think I could probably find it again, but um, it's just one of those things where it's like, if we can fix it with that, then great. Okay, so I'm just gonna touch up here. And isn't it neat when you fill in those back that background, it just, it finishes it off so nice. 
I was not liking what some of mine looked like. And then I did this fill in and I was like, well, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> All right. Now let's do a little bit of shading. And for this one, this is how I did my other ones. Uh, of course, there's tons of ways that you could decide to shade it. I'm going to do this like a little C shape here in the bulbous section. Um, but I'm keeping it a little bit away from the edge because it looks kind of neat. Let's do that first. And, and I'm still staying a little bit away when I'm spreading it out. It's kind of, I saw this and I, I think I've done it before, but I just kind of I really like the way that looks. So I decided to do that here. Yeah, and it looks neat. And then of course, you know, play with it to your liking. I don't want them just to look like that one was looking like a horseshoe. <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay. Like I said, just play with it. And then, you know, like right in here where things converge. And even here, if you want to add a little bit uh, of uh, shading, it adds a little drama, right, um, to where things converge. You can do that. Just a little there. Oh, look at that. Wow. <laughs> it just, it doesn't get old. It just brings it to life. How cool is that? All right, so this is Elegant. And let me share with you, because I'm these are not completed uh, by any means, um, but they're completed enough where, well, I'm, I'm not afraid to show incomplete work. <laughs> I'm if, if you watch these regularly and you watched yesterday's, you see I'm not afraid to even uh, sh demonstrate live how there are no such thing as mistakes in said tangle. That was so funny. Um, you'll have to go back and watch 2SS2 if you didn't watch it. Okay, so here is my first one from the morning session. I was really not uh, liking what I had done. And then I just, you know, um, my friend Diane, her saying, if you don't like it, it just means you're not done yet. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but it's just like, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep filling in. And we, because it's February, I decided instead of doing, you know, this shape, well, heck, instead of doing three, just do two, and then we have hearts for Valentine's Day. So I filled that mostly with uh, hearts in those areas, um, decided to fill them in with um, Prismacolor, and then, of course, you know, adding the shine with the jelly roll is just amazing. And um, so that was one, and then here's another one. This one was... <laughs> This one started out as a demonstration. Uh, so if you watch, when I get the replays posted, um, some were having a challenge, so I abandoned what I was doing. Because, um, you know, the objective of my Tangle Times is to help in understanding how, you know, and, and exploring the Tangle. But I want to make sure that people are, are getting it. I'm not losing anyone. So that's what this started off as, and then we just kept going. And look at how amazing that looks. Um, and this is this was my... Was my uh, the other one that I was working on and like I said just still playing around with it but I kind of kind of like it I wanted to try the an actual border instead um oh yeah that's how this one started off like this as a border and then I just kind of went crazy but that's kind of how this one how it started off was like this I knew I, I was like I couldn't remember how that started and that's what's neat about Zentangle is you know when we use our do a string or whatnot it just disappears and it's amazing. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, um, like, share, subscribe, all of that. I'm honored if you if you do, you know, any or all of those. Uh, I appreciate it very much. And uh, below the uh, the step ups in the uh, description section, ways to connect with me if you would like to have fun, um, you know, on, on a live uh, live online call with people from all over. Uh, would love to have you join us. So feel free to connect um, via the multiple ways that there are um, listed on, on my website. And would love to have you join uh, for a Thursday Tangle Time. Those are free. I do once a month, at least once a month. I, I'm adding in a second uh, monthly uh, class that, that is one that has a fee. 
But uh, I also have a membership club so that way you get all the content for one price. So you can always check that out. But we'd love to have you try it. Try it for free. See if you like us. And, uh, and then you can always go from there. But we'd love the more the merrier. We have a lot of fun and produce just amazing, amazing work. And, um, and it's, yeah, I can't say enough about it if I do say so myself. So with that, thanks so much for watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you happy tangling.